Welcome to video number one in the full restoration of a 1983 Guercioti, otherwise known incorrectly in the United States as Guercioti. And uh, <clears throat> I'm going to take you from the very beginning all the way through the whole process. First, we're going to take a look at all the bike parts just for fun. And then we're going to talk about how to do the job properly. So let's look at some parts, okay? Here's the frame. Minor issues. The paint almost has a white dusting on it, which is very common with oxidization. And be cleaned up. <clears throat> a teeny bit of spot rust on the chrome down there. It's the condition here. Campagnolo front hub with ambrosia. These are so on tires. How about that? The real thing from the old days. And this is a Mavic rear wheel, so I'm going to guess that somewhere along the line the rear wheel <clears throat> had to be replaced, which is not a problem in my mind. Here we have a San Marco gold seat, again from early period. Let's put the frame back where it goes, and then we'll go inside and look at the other parts. Mostly it's campy. <clears throat> I would be very surprised if this did not come with a uh, Campagnolo uh, not uncommon for a wheel to get messed up. Let's go look at some other parts. I've done quite a few bikes. Never a full campy one since I was a kid. Here's our parts. Nuevo Record Campignolo. I think those are Nuevo Record. Campagnolo crank, isn't that beautiful? Gercotti, Indaisha, Gercotti, seat post, Campagnolo, Nuovo Record. Familiar. Beautiful chain, free will. Beautiful leather wrapped, original. Campy levers on there, I think, too. Absolutely. Nice <clears throat> bottom bracket. Looking good. Okay, let's uh, talk about some rules of the game and how you approach a job like this. Let's grab a... A lot of the times, <clears throat> with older bikes, not with Campagnolo hubs, but with cheaper hubs, you have to lap the bearings. And lapping involves taking Colgate regular toothpaste with calcium diphosphate, replacing the grease with it, spinning the wheel for 20 minutes. It resurfaces the uh, races and then you replace the bearings. But this feels pretty good. I don't think I'll have to do that. Okay, well, let me just give you some general thoughts. This bike is a really good condition. I mean, it's got its issues, but nothing major. Probably the hardest part will be to try to get a little twister on those rear axle uh, threaded things that you can adjust the position of the rear axle in the, uh, <clears throat> in the frame there, in the dropout. It's missing one of the little twirlers. Very common problem. A 
Don't use any equipment. Don't use Dremel tools. Don't use grinders. Don't use polishers. Don't use anything electronic that's a rotary piece of equipment. You can do things a lot faster, but you can also ruin a lot of these parts real, real quickly. Out of everything on this bike, I think the only thing I'll use a Dremel with a polishing nub and mother's <coughs> magnet aluminum polish is on the center bolt for the brakes, the one that you can see. Those look like the plating is pretty well gone. And if they are, I'll well polish them off. If you use a wire wheel on a bench grinder, you're going to take whatever factory finish was on there right off. If you use anything like that on aluminum, you're going to ruin the aluminum because the steel is much stronger in those wire brush on a bench grinder. Everything's done by hand. And it's done slowly. If you do have to work with a brush, you use brass only, a handheld little cheap brush that you can use for cleaning because the brass is softer than the other, than the steel. That means you use like an old perfectly clean t-shirt and you put just a little dab of polish on the cloth, work it into the cloth so that the goop is not you know, floating on top at all, it's just in the cloth, then work it with that cloth. Do everything carefully by hand, lubricate by hand. I don't want to bench grind the chain, but that one looks iffy and the freewheel's pretty crapped up. I'm gonna hit them with WD-40. But if you go slow and you go careful, you'll have a great outcome. One of the tricks with restoration is your finished product is only as good as the work you did every step along the way. If you worked on the paint on the frame properly and brought the decal work or the painted decals back properly and you worked on the derailleur and lubricated it and took it apart properly and, and, and polished it properly and used the right cabling and set everything just right and got the wheels tweaked in. If every single step is correct, absolutely right, then you end up with a killer bike. And the answer is work slow, patience. I don't know how many videos are gonna be in this series. Might be 20, 30, 40, 50, I don't know. We're gonna start cleaning up the frame just because I love the frame. It's so beautiful and I'm gonna have fun watching it come back. We'll be making decisions. When do you depart? from what the factory had. It looks to me like they put a very thin clear coat on the chain stays where it's chromed. And of course that's in lousy condition. So I can take it off and just polish out the chrome or I can repaint it. Or I can leave it and just clean it up a little bit. All these things will be discussed and, and worked on together. You're gonna see each and every step I don't intend on doing anything without recording it. So you really will see what does it take to bring back a 12 speed from 1983 that was a marvelous Italian racing bike, all campy, uh, faster than hell, you know, and those uh, sew on tires. I've never had a bike that had sew on tires. I had a bike once when I was a kid that was an Itala that originally had sew ons, but didn't by the time I got it. So I'm gonna actually be riding putting those suckers on and riding with them probably next spring. But anyway, welcome to the video. Be patient as we do the work. Wear gloves, wear protective eyewear if you're working with liquids, cleaning compounds and such. Be sure to work with stuff outside where there's lots of good uh, ventilation. We're going to take our time.
and we're going to bring this bike back right. Welcome aboard. Again, this is video number one in the series on fully restoring a 1983 Gerjot. I will mention it's a 25 inch frame. I don't take a 25 inch, I take a 23, but I've found if you ride the correct size true racing bike, you're gonna feel crunched. Just not enough reach. The larger frame's gonna give me a more comfortable ride. You might be watch getting on it, getting off it, not to get hurt. And, uh, but that's okay. Uh, but I went a little bit large understanding what that trade-off would be, but that bike will be comfortable to ride in the 25 uh, inch size, much more comfortable than the actual true size I would have raced. I don't want a curved back turned. I don't want that position. I want more up. I'll also be able to put that handlebar up a little bit higher because it's not 25 inch and the seat will have to be a little bit lower. <laughs> you know, that's another thing too. Anyway, here we go.